So good evening. You know, I've been your pastor for eight years and a half already. When I came, I didn't have white hair. Now I have all kinds. I don't know why. But I've been kind of thinking, going back, like going down memory lane. And I remember that when I first became your pastor and All Saints Parish merged the communities of St. James and Boniface and Our Lady of Guadalupe. When I asked you who you were, and everyone repeated the same thing, we are a very welcoming community. We are a very welcoming parish. And I think that's true, you know, except for a few grumpy people here and there, but you are a welcoming community because you know everybody, you know each other. Like before Mass, you love to chat with one another, give each other's medical report, and staying after Mass and saying hi to one another. And it's true. Everyone is always concerned about being more welcoming. In fact, it's almost like a mantra every time we have meetings like pastoral council or commissions. Uh, we want to be more welcoming. We want to be more welcoming. I, I think we, we are welcoming. But then I also think, but is really a spirit of welcoming enough? You know, like grocery stores, they have welcoming people. They hire specific people to welcome you, right? And I personally love every time I, I, I am welcome admire, and I know all the workers by name. And when I had COVID and I was out of business for about two weeks and went back, is where have you been? You know, so that's a nice way of welcoming you back when they know you haven't been around. But, but if you go to a store and uh, if they are super welcoming, but uh, the place is, is, is dirty or the place is not properly stocked or the products are not good, you don't go back. It doesn't matter how welcoming they are, right? And so welcoming is not enough even though we are very welcoming, right? So that was one thought with Father Jose. You know, when I'm trying to fall asleep and I think about these things. But there was another thing that I was thinking uh, of eight years and a half ago, is that when I became your pastor, and, and of course we, we had to close Guadalupe, but, but then we had St. Boniface and St. James, one thing that came to my mind when I walked into the churches was, where is the crucifix? And of course, we, we did have the, the processional crosses, but processional crosses are tiny, and neither St. James nor Sir Boniface had a large crucifix in them. Um, and we were blessed as time went by that we were able to take the crucifix from Our Lady of Guadalupe and install it here at St. James. And at St. Boniface, we found a crucifix in the basement and, and it had lots of cobwebs and the, Jesus was quite pale, so we had to give him a little bit of makeup to, to look nice. And, and finally, we installed that crucifix in, in the apse at St. Boniface. But that was kind of my question, where is the crucifix? You know, what, what, why is there not a large crucifix in here? And the same thing with the stations. Now, recently we have beautifully put those station backgrounds uh, at both of our churches, and they, they look nice. The, the stations really pop. Um, the stations are um, not an added decoration to a church. It's not, we don't have them just because we want to have decorations. No, because we want to highlight them. This is the journey of Jesus on Good Friday, and we actually want to make that journey pop so that we actually see it. We want it to be visible. You cannot miss them. And of course, the stations are all about the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ. So I was kind of going down memory lane, and now we have the stations and we have the, the crucifixes. I know that when we put the crucifixes up, it was challenging for some people's theologies. Some parishioners, I could feel some resistance. You know, Catholics don't like change, right? So there was a little bit of a tension. And some people would say, well, Father, we are a resurrection church. And when people say that, it can mean two ways. 
uh, in, in one way it can mean a sincere effort. Yeah, we are a resurrection church, because indeed we are. Uh, we believe in the resurrection, and we come and celebrate the sacraments precisely because we believe in the resurrection. But also when people say we are a resurrection church can mean something different. And this is what I mean. You know, Father, we love happy endings, so don't tell us about that cross stuff. Just, just give us the reason, Jesus. We like it that, that way a little bit better. So we love happy endings because we love Disney movies. So, so we are reason, we're a resurrection church, Father. So I know that when we put the crucifixes, um, it was challenging for some people's theologies. But if we really take a serious look at, at the crucifix, what do you see? You see that Jesus has nothing. He has no money. His wounds are open. He struggles to breathe. And yet, he is crowned. He has a crown. A crown of thorns. And to make sure that we know he is a king, there is a title on top of the cross that you have seen in many, many crucifixes. I-N-R-I. Jesus Nazoreos Rex Judeorum. Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. In Latin. So, when I look back, and, and I think this is the crucifix should make us uncomfortable. The crucifix should make us uncomfortable. It's okay to feel uncomfortable before the image of the dying Jesus or Jesus already dead in the crucifix. We have to remember that it's not the amount of suffering that he endured or the amount of blood that he poured out that saves us. We are not sadic masochistic. It's the amount of love with which Jesus embraced his cross and stayed faithful in the race. That's what saves us. He was willing to die for his bride, the church. In the crucifix, Jesus is saying that you and I are worth dying for. You are worth dying for. That's the love of Jesus, a love that is stronger than death. And in the same way, just like the crucifix makes us uncomfortable, the crucifix also gives us comfort. Because that's exactly what we hear today. Today you will be with me in paradise. Those words were given precisely in the hour of trial when he was literally hanging on that cross. No matter what we go through in life, he wants to grant us life and wants to bring us to be in his kingdom. So in Jesus on the cross, we find welcome if we are willing to repent and turn away from sin and turn to him. Jesus on the cross is actually the best welcome we can welcome in our welcome. You can't get more welcoming than that. The solemnity of Christ the King's gospel puts us precisely at this moment of the crucified Christ, the passion on the cross. It brings us back to Good Friday. That's the gospel of today. Now, in that event, we see two conflicting attitudes. In one hand, we see a repentant sinner, and then we also see a non-repentant sinner, and Jesus is right in the middle. We also find the tension of two statements regarding the identity of Jesus. In one hand, a sign that says, you are a king, the king of the Jews, and on the other hand, we have a non-repentant th crowd and thief that question him, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself on us. So in other words, Jesus, you're a joke. You have nothing. Are you a king? What kind of a king are you? You ain't got no money, no clothing, not even your followers. They already abandoned you. You ain't got nothing. 
But he indeed does have something. He has a crown. He has a crown. He indeed is a king. Yes, he is a king, and he has the power to save. St. Paul in the letter to the Colossians says, The Father delivered us from the power of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. Let me repeat that one. In him all things hold together. So going back to what I was saying at the beginning, yes, we are a welcoming parish. I truly believe that. But welcome is not enough. Our identity is not in how nice we are. Anyone can be nice. Our identity is in Christ Jesus, the King. In Him, all things hold together. It's all for Jesus. It's all about Jesus. One very last thought. You remember that three years, two or three years ago, we had to take down the steeple cross because it was going to fall over the entire building. And then we cut little crosses from the material of the previous cross and we kind of gave it away. Um, and so this year, I received a very special gift. This is like a little Calvary made with three crosses from the material of the steeple cross that was outside, okay? And this was made uh, by a parishioner who just passed away this past year. And, and his name is in the list. And his wife was going through the garage. You know, what happens, the widows can relate here that you have to go through things and it's a, it's a tough moment when you have to clean the house and give away certain things that you're not going to use anymore. And so the, the widow was going through the garage, going through all the tools and, and all that fun stuff that men leave behind, right? And she found that he was making this for me. He was making a little calvary with the crosses from the steeple cross. He was going to put stones on top of it. It was going to be like a little calvary. But he died. He died suddenly. And so he was never able to finish it. But, but the wife was kind enough to, to bring it to me. And it's a, it's a beautiful gift. And, and that's the gospel of today. That's the gospel of today. It's the moment of the passion of Christ. So this parishioner of ours... He got it. He got it. Because it is in Him that all things hold together in the Lord. It's about Jesus. It's not just about being nice and welcoming. Anyone can be that. It's about the Lord. So we can surely say in the spirit of the good thief of today's gospel, Jesus, please remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he can truly reply from the cross with sincere heart. Amen. I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Amen. Amen.